What's going on guys? Tony here, bringing guys back to another video segment. This time we're going to be talking about how caffeine affects the human body, both as sport performance as well as exercise. And it's going to happen right now. Okay, so this is basically the number one question I've always get from my student athletes, both at a high school and collegiate level. And then they always pull out like a can of like Bang and a can of like Celsius. And then they pretty much ask me, hey coach, do you think these would be able to help me out with my force performance? To be honest with you, I can't say nothing about that. I don't recommend substances, especially when it comes to like potential like violations of certain rules. For example, the NCAA, the association could be anything. As a coach, I'm abide by those kind of rules, especially when there are certain associations out there, leagues, um, or anything for that matter, pretty much have like a strict rule about what substances are and what substances are actually banned within competing for sport performance. So, as a coach for high school and NCAA, I do not recommend any substances whatsoever. What I can do is provide you information about how certain substances actually affect your body um, when it comes to sport performance and exercise. And that's basically what the purpose of this video is about. The reason why I can only give you information is because it's only up to you, the individual, about whether or not you'll be able to take the supplement or substances for or not and be able to use it for your own needs kind of thing. Um, because the substances and supplements taken that are sold in store, whether at GNC, Walmart, wherever, right? Um, majority of the times they're not really for everybody and everybody has like a different reaction to substances and basically up to them to decide how it is. So without further ado, let's go ahead and check it out. So what is caffeine? As we all know, caffeine is a stimulant drug that affects the nervous system, both in the brain, your central nervous system, and um, it basically what's supposed to do is it's supposed to quickly boost our alertness as well as energy levels, especially when it comes to sport performance and exercise, well, any sort of everyday activity kind of stuff. So when you wake up, you drink uh, caffeine such as like coffee, tea, or maybe any type of energy drinks to keep you up and get, uh, to keep you more active and productive. And caffeine can also be within any product. It could be coffee, tea, soft drink, energy drink, as well as any type of pre-workout supplements you're able to find within a GNC store. The legality of caffeine within sports, all right? So like I said, every association, every committees are actually different based on how they actually approach certain products and how they are tend to be used in sports, how it tend to be certain, maybe like a certain dosage level can also be used. So from what I found out is that the International Olympic Committee, as well as the Anti-Doping Agency, um, caffeine is not illegal, it is permitted. However, the World Anti-Doping Agency basically um, or keeping monitor on the type of substance, as well as, you know, the number of intakes per individual. So in case it ever becomes an issue within the future, therefore, it's still on the watch list. Which means in the future, if it becomes an issue, they could ban caffeine from, the, uh, from competing in sports. What kind of caught me off guard is that there is a source that says that 800 milligrams, 800 milligrams of caffeine is considered prohibited. Catch me off guard. 800 milligrams? Really? Nah. I don't think anyone in the world can handle 800 milligram unless you have like a fat active metabolism like a flash, but no. Um, if it's 400 milligram, that would make sense. And that would make sense because um, most individuals can actually remain under the legal limit if they're able to consume less than 350 milligrams of caffeine. So we'll get to that in a bit about what the certain amount of dosage recommendations for like certain individuals, especially for healthy individuals as well. So the National Collegiate Athletic Association, the NCAA in all three divisions, right? From what I see, it's basically the only organization that is able to restrict the amount of caffeine within athletes. Um, such as like taking a drug test, um, they limit the urine concentration to um, 15 micrograms per, per, per milliliters, which equals to 500 milligrams of caffeine um, two to three hours before you take any event. And these type of urine tests can actually be done before going to regionals and nationals. And they are likely to be done after finals. And that goes for any big time competition, whether you're competing for the USA's, whether you're competing for nationals, Olympics, it could be anything. Like anytime you're, done, you're in the top three and you're done with the competition, sometimes you have to take a dress test afterward just to get verification to whether, whether on to whether or not the competition itself is actually clean. Now, the state and scholastic championship committee, such as, for example, California, CIF, right? Um, not many information is actually um, are provided based on the legality of caffeine substances, other than the policies they have toward other substances like steroid abuse, as well as perform other performance enhancement drugs. 
Although they did push forward policies for every school to educate the students about substances and how they affect the body. And I think that should definitely be mandatory, especially for, for all coaches, all uh, health teachers, science teachers, anyone that can be able to talk, to give them information about how the supplement actually affects the, the student body. Okay, so for the recommended intake for caffeine, according to the USA Food Drug Administration, they basically stated that 400 milligrams of caffeine is sufficient for healthy adults to consume daily. And that would basically equal to about four cups of coffee. So like I said, everyone's different. Everyone, everyone has their own different sufficient needs. Um, this is basically just the average. Sometimes people can go above 400, which is not recommended, or at least, you know. But however, 400 milligrams or whatsoever is actually the deficient need for any healthy individual which are looking to consume caffeine, okay? So now let's go ahead and take a look at the ideal intake before workout. The minimum intake would be 150 milligrams of caffeine, which would equal to a pre-workout itself. And it varies among individuals based on their body weight. So for example, one to three milligrams of caffeine um, is needed per one kilogram of the person's body weight. So if an 80 kilogram person was actually able to consume caffeine to get a good workout in, um, they would actually have to consume 240 milligrams of caffeine in order for them to feel the energy needed to get a really good workout in. But like I said, everybody's different. Everyone has a different um, reaction to when, when it comes to taking supplements. Sometimes the need could be a little bit less. Sometimes the need could be a little bit more. Um, it depends on the, the person's body needs. Okay, so here we're going to be talking about the benefits of consuming caffeine for sport performance and exercise. So, as we all know, caffeine happens to be a nervous system stimulant. So, when it comes to endurance performance in runners, it helps increase the time required to fatigue, which means you're able to last longer in a competition without fatiguing at a certain time they usually would. Um, it therefore allows, to, allows themselves to push harder for an extended period of time. And then when it comes to doing high intensity training, although some of the so some results in certain studies are actually inconsistent, we never know. But for high intensity training, it's actually helpful in terms of increasing alertness, increasing um, faster activation of the muscle fibers, as well as having longer durations when it comes to doing intensive exercise such as sprints. Now, when it comes to strength training, we all know that it's pretty common for weightlifters to take. Um, when it comes to like, you know, moving, when it comes to like doing heavy lifting and it allows them to move the weight like a little bit more easier. So you'll get like certain groups, um, like, you know, power lifters, weight lifters, strongmen, throwers, right? Would all take a caffeine supplement to help with their respective training routines. And the caffeine for weight lifting has always been the biggest benefactor, which in, in which would be applied to pre-workout supplements. And then everybody takes pre-workout supplements to improve performance within the gym, as I mentioned before. Next, we're going to be talking about fat loss on, uh, for it being the benefits on consuming caffeine for sport performance. Now, get this, fat loss, I know, I understand, you know, it sounds silly, but like, get this. Caffeine is a primary component in many weight loss products, such as coffee shakes, for example, um, because caffeine, it, like I said before, it enhances energy, right? So when you when it enhances energy, it allows the person to move more, work out harder. Therefore, you're able to burn off like a lot more fat than usual. Um, some studies indicate that that co that coffee, right, caffeine and coffee, <laughs> that coffee actually aids the release of fat storages during exercise, um, which allows the body to burn off more fat with an increased metabolism. Um, the way you can tell, sweating a lot more, body's heating up. You got like a whole like you know, excess uh, heat, as well as sweat coming out of you when you're actually feeling the sensation. So this would be accomplished by raising heat production, like I said, and the epinephrine hormone, which both aids into burning excess calories as well as fats. When it comes to talking about like uh, caffeine within sport performance, um, when it comes to like uh, how caffeine affects one capacity to participate in sport, there is a positive side about that, which I mentioned before, the benefits, right? So on the positive side, you feel more energized. You exercise harder. And at the same time, you're able to last longer periods of time during exercise. Therefore, you're able to, give, you're able to allow yourself to get a good workout in when you're at the gym. So you got the positive side, but it's not without the negative side that we're going to be talking about right now. And the negative side would basically uh, be involved feeling jittery, anxious, 
which is basically a bad combination, especially when it comes to competition anxiety. Um, so when you go to compete in sport for the first time, you know that there are athletes out there that feel very, very nervous. They have like adrenaline running through their bodies, right? They got way too many thoughts running through their head. And when it, if you were to have that plus taking caffeine, it would make it difficult to perform effectively when you have those combinations and, make, and gives off like really, really bad results. So now we're gonna be talking about the side effects of consuming caffeine. So when you take uh, caffeine, nervous system stimulant, it actually makes you feel sleepless, or in this case, sleeplessness. So you feel restless, you feel shakiness, you might deal with like insomnia if you were to take caffeine like after 3 p.m. on the daily basis. Um, you might be diuretic, you could be dealing with the dehydration, right? So therefore, when you take caffeine, it actually causes the body to urinate more, releasing all the excess salt and water. Therefore, um, the person who has to drink more water, try to keep the balance at the minimum, basically. And also, there could be stomach issues, right? Equivalent to someone drinking alcohol, which I don't recommend, we'll talk about that in another video. Um, if you were to drink caffeine on the empty stomach, and it's probably going to cause issues before doing any strenuous activity, such as you might feel nauseous, you might feel into type of in indigestion, which basically means sour stomach. So if you're going to be drinking on an empty stomach, you really need to know the appropriate dose of on the take, as well as the appropriate time to take it before exercising. And of course, last but not least, we're going to be talking about anxiety. So like I said, competition anxiety, caffeine, they don't mix, or any anxiety in general with caffeine, they don't mix at all. So it's not ideal to consume caffeine, especially if you're going through competition anxiety. So therefore you're gonna be dealing with nervousness, shaking across the body, therefore you have no focus whatsoever. So the frequent questions always asked, is the higher caffeine content associated with the better pre-workout? Now, the answer to that would be yes and no. So remember, caffeine is a very, very powerful stimulant. It affects the brain and it's likely to cause headaches, which is why there are some pre-workout products that have other substances that work well with caffeine um, and they're able to uh, help decrease the adverse effects caused by any sort of excessive intakes, you know. So like if a pre-workout product says that the recommended doses is one scoop to get a good workout in and person like and that person decided to go overboard, take two scoops, three scoops, if they were to go nuts, they would take like multiple scoops. Um, luckily, the, some of these pre-workout products actually have so other substances they will counteract the effect. So therefore, you're just gonna feel very highly energetic, you got the jittery going on kind of thing, right? Um, and therefore, yeah, it's not really a good idea. <clears throat> so be well aware about the recommended dosage and be well aware about how much you're consuming because the fact that some of these caffeine, like I said, they're not for everybody and therefore it's gonna be affecting you like probably in a mental level as well as the physical level because you may never know how, what's gonna do to you. So another question to ask would be, do all pre-workout supplements contain caffeine? Not all of them. There are pre-workout products that are, uh, that are caffeine free or they at least have like a very, very, very low dose. This is basically ideal for people who are not ready to have stimulants running through their body um, and it works just as well as any other pre-workout supplements taken. And then the last question would be, what's the difference between caffeine and pre-workout supplements versus coffee? Which one do you prefer? <laughs> Now that's a good question because uh, some pre-workout supplements have synthetic materials for caffeine like C4 and it'll explode, while some have natural products like uh, like ghost pre-workouts. Again, I do not recommend these products. I'm just giving a bit of an insight about what these uh, products have. So coffee by itself is already its own natural product, whereas pre-workout supplements have other substances that contribute into helping get helping you with your workouts. Some pre-workout supplements actually absorb faster than coffee. So for example, if you were to like uh, if you were to like uh, take a pre-workout supplement, like any type of uh, supplement you think of, they would take about 30 to 60 minutes um, to absorb and to be absorbed into your body before you actually attain any sort of optimal impact. Versus coffee is actually uh, likely to be around 60 to 90 minutes, basically. So, as I talked about this over and over before, reasons not to consume caffeine. Like I said, caffeine is not for everybody. People with specific conditions really need to consult with their medical health care provider first before taking any supplements. Caffeine sensitivity is also a thing because even a small dose can bring uh, body intolerance of the substance, such as uneasiness, nauseous, heart racing, jitters, as well as sleeplessness. And sometimes it can also result into like panic attack, anxiety attack, which is not, which is something we don't need, something we don't want at all, you know? 
And then, get this, there was also allergic reaction to having caffeine. Yes, there are individuals out there who actually have allergies to this kind of substance. So, common, like, an allergy reaction to caffeine would, intrude, would include trouble breathing, the throat starts to swell, and they can also deal with, like, rashes all over the body. And then, whatchamacallit, the last one we're gonna, the last one we're going to be talking about is basically addictive. We all know caffeine is super addictive. You know, just like any other drug, um, it's basically it's, it's basically a very addictive substance, and it may affect health in the long run as we get older when we continue to consume caffeine. And it's actually hard to not deal with caffeine. So get this: if you do have a caffeine addiction, pull out your hand like this. All right, look at it, and if your hand shakes a lot, right. That basically tells you that, you know, you have a caffeine addiction. Even if like a slight shake, like a bad shake, or goes like this a little bit, right? Like a slight shake, it tells you you have a caffeine addiction. If it doesn't shake, that means you're fine, you're normal, nothing's wrong, uh, nothing going on, just go on a daily living. So, it's not bad, but like I said, caffeine pretty much affects everybody differently. And if you are choosing to consume caffeine, you really need to consult your health care uh, healthcare provider first before taking any sort of supplements whatsoever that involve this type of uh, substance. So, caffeine and pre-workouts, right? <laughs> um, like I said before, it provides the energy, the drive, the concentration during your workouts. Um, most supplements actually contain about 150 to 300 milligrams of caffeine per serving. So you gotta be aware of how much you're consuming, right? Everyone's intake is actually different. Sometimes it's not really for everybody to run. You, you just gotta not take it at all, basically. So if you're consuming energy drinks like Bang, Rockstar, Monster, or Venom, there is a chart in the description down below that tells you what the caffeine content is in any drink to be able to consume. So just be well aware of how much you guys are taking and also with this chart, it will be able to help you about how much caffeine content actually is in this drink and um, you know, be mindful about how much you guys are, are, are drinking per day. You know, everyone's reaction is different. Just wanna make sure you guys are healthy and you guys are staying strong about this, okay? Be very, very mindful about how much caffeine you're taking. So that is it for today's video, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed my content. If you guys do, please go ahead and leave a like and subscribe. If you guys got any questions, comment, concern about my um, caffeine products in general, um, please leave a comment down below, really. Um, I'll be happy to get back into you. I'll be happy to discuss any, like, you know, any anything related to um, for performance and exercise, I'll definitely be able to help you guys in that. Um, I'm definitely going to be posting more video content uh, relating to sport performance and exercise uh, as best as I can. Um, if you guys got any ideas um, for me to, to be able to look into, like, hey coach, uh, what are the things I can do for improving my core strengthening? Hey coach, what can I do to improve my jump speed? Um, definitely uh, definitely drop in a comment down below. I'll definitely look into them and provide like my inside knowledge on what you guys can do based on those particular topics. So without further ado, if you guys have got any questions, comment, concern relating to this topic about caffeine, how it affects poor performance, leave them in the comments down below as usual. And then I'll be happy to give you guys my information. Um, I'll be happy to get back to you guys as best as possible. So without further ado, thank you for enjoying the video and I'll, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you.